Let's do our regular standing warm-ups and then some floor work. So feet hip width apart, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders lined up. Activate your core with those ribs towards your spine and up. Feel that spine lengthen and support your low back. Spread your toes, relax your arms, and reach your head up as you breathe. So belly drops or opens as your diaphragm drops. And as you exhale, it sinks back in. So just let that motion happen. Don't constrict anything. And just focus inward on your yoga perspective. Inhaling, bring your arms to shoulder level, keeping your shoulders down. Exhale, hands to your heart. Remember, keep your heart open. Inhale, arms out to the front, shoulders down. And then exhale your hands behind you, press them to the floor, and lift your heart. Stretch your head back, get into that back bend just gently. And then pivot at your hips, exhaling over. Hands coming up, head down. Getting those shoulders starting to work. Move your chin for the neck area. Let it release a little bit more. And then bend your knees slightly and work your way up into an upper body back bend. Chest high and head back. Spread your toes and remember to breathe. And then as you come up, inhale upright and release into mountain pose. Take a moment feeling your body, especially through the spine as the energy starts flowing. And again, inhaling, stretching at shoulder level, hands to your chest, inhale to the front, and clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. So shift the fingers one position over. Lift your heart, stretch into the back bend, and pivot at your hips, exhaling all the way over. Hands up and head down. Lift your sitting bones, get those legs stretching a little bit more. And then once more, lift the ribs, drop the sitting bones, work your way all the way up into the back bend. Shoulders down, chest high. Keep breathing and stretching out through the head. Spread your toes, no gripping. And then inhale upright, release your arms, and again, just feel your response. And we'll do our side stretches next. So let's keep one arm down, the other one out, palm toward the ceiling, and hand above your shoulder. Keep the shoulders both down and stretch. Exhale, slide to the side. Remember, no leaning forward. So. The hand comes down toward your knee or beyond if that's where you want to go. Arm by your ear and both shoulders and hips facing the front. Ribs opening as you push that foot, you're leaning away from down even more. And then inhale up, release your arm. Feel the sides a little bit different, so we'll balance. Arm out, palm to the ceiling, and above your shoulder. Keep the shoulders both toward your waist as you lean to the side. And again, arms by your ear, hand just sliding down where it wants to go, and those ribs stretching apart as you push your foot down. Take a moment to breathe and open through the ribs. Inhale back upright, release that side. And again, notice a little bit more opening through the ribs along both sides. And then open the spine. So for our twist, we want the spine to be separating so it's got room to do its twisting. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, clasp your elbows. Arms next to your ears, sitting bones down, spine stretching open, and exhale to twist either direction. Take a breath, spread your toes, lengthening, and exhale open. <clears throat> over. As you get into your forward position, lift your sitting bones, relax your upper body, keep your arms by your ears, and don't forget to breathe. And again, weight on both feet as you work your way up in the twist, and lift your heart, drop your shoulders, pull your elbows back, upper body back bend. Remember, 
Gentle on your low back when you're twisting. Inhale, upright. Exhale, round to the center and switch your arms around. Stretch again up. Exhale and turn to the other side. Take a breath and pivot over on the exhalation. Then again, spread your toes, lift your sitting bones, straighten your knees as much as feels okay, and just relax the whole upper body. And then inhale, work your way up, and another back bend, lifting your heart, upper body only. Take a breath, stretch it out. And then on an inhalation, come upright, exhale around to the center, arms up, shoulders down, extended mountain. And then push up on one side, come up on the opposite toe, lifting the heel, so the side you stretch, that foot stays flat. Exhale that side down, <coughs> inhale the other one up. Maximize as much as you'd like through that whole lengthening side. Down again and up on the other side. And release. Inhale once more on the final side. And then plant both feet, bring both arms up, hook the thumbs. And stretch up, a little back bend, lifting your heart, pulling your hands back. And then separate your hands, swan dive forward. Push the sitting bones back, chest leading. Come until you're parallel to the floor. Stretch the back of your neck, so tuck that chin just slightly. Stretch out through the arms. And then drop into ragdoll. Take a moment there, just hanging with the sitting bones. And pivoting at the hip, just drop all the way into ragdoll. Pull in deeper with your hands behind your legs if you want. A little more back stretch. And then arms to the front, knees slightly bent. Lift the ribs, sitting bones going down. And then wind your spine all the way into the back bend. And mountain pose. So as you get back into mountain pose, just take a moment feeling that whole spine more activated from our warm-ups and breathe. Angle your toes slightly out, so turning from the top of the thighs, knees go in the same direction still as the second toes and evenly into the ball of the foot area and heels. So sink evenly. I'm going to do some squats. So as we do the squats, remember, do what's right for your body only. If you only need to go to here, that's fine with your hands on your hips or your knees. And then stretching back straight. Otherwise, we're going to exhale and go all the way, hands to the floor with those knees going toward your toes, sitting bones pushing back so those knees don't go beyond your toes. And then inhale and stand back all the way up. So exhaling down into the squat and inhaling back up. So we're doing our frogs, coming into that frog shape and then going back up. So just a little if you want and up or all the way to the floor and up. And you can do this slowly or you can get it more accelerated and doing it faster if you want to. It's always personal practice on these knee bends. So do what's right for you. Feel that hip pelvis area all working as you go into the squats. And just a few more times, going down and breathing in as you come up. Exhaling down, inhaling up, feeling that energy flowing and those knees and hips working. And then the next time you're up, turn your feet to the front and release back into mountain pose. And again, just feel your body a little bit more energized today. Take a breath, relax everything. Feel those feet supporting you evenly. And now let's do one more standing with our feet slightly out for our pelvic tilts. So angling the toes again with the knees the whole leg turning out. Bend your knees over your toes, not beyond. Pushing the sitting bones slightly back. Hands above your knees. Nice straight spine to start with. 
and then sink into the back. So the hips and sitting bones go back, whole pelvis moving, chest forward. Stretch it out, feel the hips especially. And then tuck the sitting bones down and forward, pulling in the ribs and looking straight down. So remember, the knees don't move, the shoulders don't move. We're just moving the spine and the pelvis. So inhale, back bending. Exhale and crunch. So a few times going at your own pace. And again, you can do it fast or you can do it slow, but you want to do it consciously, whichever way you're doing, really feeling this whole pelvis hip area working. Spine moving, breath flowing. And then the next time you're forward, just come on back up into mountain pose. As you get there again, just feel a little more circulation through the hips, pelvis, and bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, follow the hands up. A little back bend for all of you back bend lovers, bringing those thumbs as far back as you want, chest high. Exhale, swan dive, so spreading the wings and bringing your chest forward, lengthening through the neck like that swan. Exhaling into ragdoll. Hands sliding up under your knees for that halfway up stretch. Elbows, knees, spine straightening. And then bending your knees, come out all the way to the floor. And into child pose. Hips back on your heels or towards your heels. Hands, palms up, forehead down, shoulders relaxing. Take a few breaths. Exhaling and releasing. And then inhaling, sit up, slide off, and come into staff position. So heels pressing out, toes up, sitting down slightly behind you, activate that core, and stretch up through the crown. We're going to bend the knee and do our hip warm up, so foot to the opposite thigh wherever it wants to go, and the knee coming down. Notice how that's going today. If it's feeling tight, remember, bring the leg over to the side that's still extended. Knee and toes still up, but notice that that hip area gets a little bit of release. Or stay where you started if that's easy for you, just your personal preference. Again, keep those sitting bones slightly behind you. Keep the core active. Keep the spine nice and straight, stretching up through the crown, just letting this knee come toward the floor when it's ready. You can add weight with your hands if you want, but don't press because that makes the muscles resist and that defeats the whole releasing that would otherwise happen. Take a breath, just relaxing. And when you're ready to move side to side, bring your knee and ankle into your hands or wrap your arms and pull the leg in a little closer and rotate back and forth, side to side. And just feel the outside of the hip getting a little bit more work done. If you love it, you can go higher or closer, remember, but you don't have to. And then release that leg. Feel the difference. When you notice what's going on, that's when you're in your yoga. And we'll do the other side. Foot to your thigh, knee coming down. Again, core active, spine straight, sitting bones behind you. Bring this leg over to the side if you'd like, or not, your choice. Let this whole leg just be relaxing, a little weight if you want, but no pressure. Exhale, feel the hip, let it release any tension or tightness. Exhale, really let it go. And then again, bring the leg and foot into your hands and arms and rotating back and forth side to side. And once more, just notice how that area outside of the hip of the rotator joint is working a little more easily as you warm it up. Higher or closer if you love it, but not if you don't. And again, releasing that, just bring those legs back out Feel your hips a little bit more warmed up 
as we're ready for a little bit more work for them. So let's go up just briefly on our hands and knees. So knees under your hips, toes straight back. Get those ribs up, supporting your lower back. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Remember, you can bring the base of the fingers down so that you're not bending your wrists if that bothers you. But we're not going to stay here long. So just get your position. And then we're going to bring the knees out toward the side with the feet still where they were. And then slide your elbows under your shoulders and bring them out to the side. So another version of a frog. This one's the swimming frog. So we're going to push the hips back. And then we're going to slide the chest forward and head coming toward your hands, keeping those hips as low as they want to be toward the floor as you swim your frog back toward the heels and up toward the hands. So just swimming the frog, hips toward the heels, and then chest toward the hands. Feel that whole outside of your hips getting a little bit more lubricated and worked. As you breathe, just relax. Feel the shoulders as well. Just noticing how your body is swimming through that frog swim. And then when you come back to the forward position, just bring the elbows in and the knees in, and then slide the hands out, feet back, drop your hips all the way down to the floor, roll all the way. Forehead to the mat. Bring your hands, palms up at your sides. Let the shoulders relax forward. Head turning to one side. Rest in crocodile. Toes slightly toward each other as you're there. Exhale, turn your head to the other side. Let that neck release in the other direction. And then facing the mat, slide your chin forward. Turn your hands, palms down under your legs. And let your shoulders come down toward the floor. So we're going to do the locust. And as we do that, we're going to slide one foot back, keep the feet hip width apart, push the hips and hip bones down. And then with that right foot in your focus, lift the right leg. Keep both hip bones pressing down into the floor or your arms wherever they are. So hips are down. Foot is going up, reaching out through the ball of the foot, base of the toe area. And if your neck gets too crunched in this position, you can bring your forehead to the mat. So just hips down, foot rising as far as it wants to go as it stretches away behind you. So strengthening your back, breathing, letting that front of the hip open a little bit more along that hip flexor of the right leg. Sink both hips down. Stretch it out, maybe lift a little higher if that works for you. Feel your back doing the work. And then still stretching out through the toes, exhale that foot back down. You can tuck your forehead back to the mat and give your neck a little release for a moment as we get ready to yeah, do the other side. So once again, chin forward if that works for you, shoulders down, hands under your thighs, Hip bones down, either to the floor or your arms. Stretch out through the toes. Focus on the left leg this time or the opposite one that you didn't do. And again, stretching it out. Press the hip bones down as you bring the foot out and up. Again, keep that neck slightly crunched with the chin forward or bring your forehead down to the floor. Take a breath. Press the sitting bones or the hip bones down and lift that foot maybe a little higher as you breathe, feeling the lower back doing its work as much as it needs to. So remember, don't overdo, do what's right for your body. Stretching it out, lifting the leg. Take a breath, stretch it further and exhale the leg all the way to the floor. Tuck your forehead down and release. Let the arms relax a little bit. And then taking your hands under you, you can either clasp them or just press them down again and press your pelvis into the hands. 
Chin forward, we're doing both feet together this time, of course. So it'll be more intense, do what's right for your body. Pressing the hips down, pelvis down, legs stretching apart about hip width apart. And then when you're ready, pressing the hip bones down, reach those toes back and lift the feet. So keep the hips down, chin slightly forward, shoulders down, and raise those feet as far as they want to go. Take a breath, relax as much as you can. And again, hip bones coming down, feet going out, and rising as far as they'd like to go. Always personal practice doing what's right for your body. Take a breath, stretch it out, lift those feet, breathe, feel the back doing the work, don't overdo it. And again, exhale and slowly bring those legs back down. Tuck your forehead, release your arms, bring the hands under your shoulders, and press up and back into a little child pose forward bend. Hands, palms up, forehead down, and rounding that whole spine. So if you want even more stretch in that lower back that we've just really been working, you can bring the knees together or not, your choice. Take a breath, exhale and relax. And then bringing your arms out to the front, we're gonna pivot up and again into table. Knees under the hips, ribs, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up, ribs up toward the spine and your heart keeping that low back supported as you're in table position. And from here, we're going to slide the right knee forward between the hands and the left leg back and come into our pigeon position. So remember, as you get those hips even toward the floor, we're gonna take the right knee way over to the right side of the mat, and then you can use your hand if you need to and pull that right foot forward. You can go as far as perpendicular with the shin compared to the rest of your body or not your choice. So as you're there with the wrists, elbows and shoulders still lined up, bring the shoulder, shoulder blades down. You can bend the elbows slightly, chest forward and look to the front or slightly up. Remember, keep stretching the back of the neck Keep those hips sinking evenly toward the floor. If your foot is in the way, you can keep sliding it up further out of the way if you want those hips to sink further. Or you can just do what's natural for you to do. But keep the hips, shoulders as even as you can. If the wrists bother you or the whole pigeon pose bothers you, you can bring your elbows to the floor and slide the hands forward coming into that reclined pigeon. So those hips will sink even further down. Chest forward, shoulder blades toward your waist. Don't lift the chin too much. Keep stretching the back of your neck, whatever position you're in. And as much as you'd like, you can stay in that position, just relaxing. Or if you're still on your hands and you want even more, you can bend that back leg and bring the foot and head toward each other. My body doesn't do that, but yours might, especially if you're a young genius cheerleader. So go ahead, I've seen it done, but I'm not going to attempt it. Take a breath, shoulders down, chest forward, wherever you are, just stretch through the back. Nice upper body back bend, relaxing those hips down toward the floor. If you're still on your forearms, slide your hands back under your shoulders, and again, just lengthen your head up toward the ceiling, chest slightly forward, and then press into your hands gently as you bring the front knee back and the back knee up, back into your table position. Ribs up, support your spine, and get ready to yeah, pinch it on the other side. So again, sitting bones and crown, reach away, shoulders bit, blades toward your waist, slide the what is it, left knee forward. Right leg back. Feel that stretch on that hip flexor starting behind you and just let it sink. Take the left knee over toward the left side of the mat. Bring that heel up as far as it wants to go. 
And then we'll let the hips even out and sink toward the floor. Staying up on your hands, chest forward, head rotating slightly forward. Stretch through the back of the neck, opening the heart, shoulder blades down toward your waist. Or if you are needing that release through the wrists or the body, slide your hands forward with the elbows where the hands used to be. So just chest forward and cram slightly up, sinking those hips down toward the floor even more as you relax, just letting it go, relaxing the shoulders and either hands under your shoulders or elbows under your shoulders. Just maximize your little back bend. Let those hips come even further down toward the floor. Keep adjusting that heel if you need to. Letting the hips sink evenly toward the floor. And exhale any tension. And again, you can stay on your forearms a few more breaths, or you can arch and bend the back knee and get a little more intensity in that hip flexor on the right side if you want to. Exhale, whatever you're doing, just relax into it, let it happen, don't force it. And then again, if you're still on your forearms, bring those hands under your shoulders, lifting your heart, dropping the shoulder blades toward your waist, crown slightly toward the ceiling, and relaxing still down through the hips. And then if you've got that leg up, you can bring it down. And then hands pressing into the floor gently. The front knee comes back, the back knee comes up. Sink again into child's pose. Feel those hips release, exhaling any tension and tightness. Deep breath in. Exhale, relax your shoulders. Just let everything release deep into that surface beneath you. And then chin tucking in, round your way up and kneel in position. Release over to the side, bring those legs out and all the way to the end of the mat. Again, core activated in staff position, shoulders over your hips, crown reaching up. Feel your whole body. Remember, never lift your chin too much. We don't want to crunch the back of the neck. Keep those sitting bones slightly behind you and that core activated and slowly roll all the way to the floor. As you get down, just take a moment, recline your integration, letting those shoulders sink down, heart open, and roll your head side to side, releasing any tension in your neck. Bring your hands to T position, palms up, sitting bones toward your head. Heels, pressing your low back down gently, and then bending your right knee, put the foot on the left side like you're standing on it. We're gonna roll all the way to the left side, bringing the knee down to the floor and the hands together. Keep your head on the floor, don't overwork your neck. So you're all the way on your left side, and you're gonna take your left hand on your knee and hold the knee on the floor as much as you can. Remember, don't overdo if you've got low back issues. And bring your right hand up above your shoulder to the ceiling, palm open. And then looking at that hand, lower it right at shoulder level toward the floor behind you. So the back of the hand is going down, the palm is up toward the ceiling. Your head is turning as much as your neck allows in that upper back twist. The shoulder and hand are coming down toward the floor for that middle back twist, and the knee is holding on the floor for that lower back twist. So remember, personal practice, do what's right for your body, just letting everything release and relax as far as it wants to go. Your hand may never make it to the floor, that's okay. Do it just as far as it wants to go. And then exhale and release any tension. Just let it relax even further. As you do, gravity may bring you further into your twist. Let it happen. Don't force it. Always personal practice, especially twists, working which parts of your spine you need it more or less in those that don't want it. Take a breath, just relaxing. And when you're ready to release completely, let go of your knee, roll onto your back. Slide the foot near the other one, straighten things out. 
and get ready to twist to the other side. So again, noticing your body, exhaling, sitting bones slightly towards your heel with those knees bent, and bending your left leg this time, foot to the right thigh. We're rolling all the way to the right side. So again, keep your head down, bring your knee all the way to the floor, shifting onto your right side. Hold the leg with your right hand, left arm right above your shoulder. Remember, not down toward your foot or up toward your head, but straight up. And then lower it as you look at it behind you. Bring your body into the twist as naturally and as deeply or not as your body needs and wants. Take a breath. Just relax. The more you emphasize those exhalations, the more the middle back releases and that hand drops toward the floor when gravity is ready to bring you, but don't force it. And as always, if you need a pad or something under your knee so that that lower back isn't so deeply in the twist, that's okay. If you don't want to turn your head so much, then that's okay on your neck, doing what's right for your neck vertebrae. Exhale, always just relaxing, allowing the twist to happen, never forcing anything to go any further than it needs or wants. Always heart open, spine releasing, body relaxing into the twist as much or little as you need and want. Exhaling, relaxing and deepening if you like. When you're ready to release, of course, letting go of the knee, rolling onto your back, and sliding that foot near the other one. And as you get back into your straight on the back position, bring your hands near your hips and slightly away from your sides, palms up, so those hearts stay open and shoulders relax. Toes toward each other, and then just release everything relaxing as you go into your Final corpse position for our relaxation. Deep breaths. Exhale. Let the shoulders sink. Let the hands, palms up, relax. Let those legs release any tension. Just scan through your body, find the tightness, breathe into it, and let it go. Just allow your body to sink evenly, deeply into the earth support, letting everything grow heavy and relax. And as your body releases into that earth support, just allow your awareness of your body to release from your awareness. And as that thought disappears, know that other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let them go as well. No need to focus on the thoughts. No need to do anything with your body, but let it relax. And just breathing deep, let your thoughts float away as gently as your breath. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. No need to think about your body or the content of any other thought. Just let them go drifting away unneeded, unnoticed. And as your thoughts drift more freely and your body just sinks more heavily, allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Focus inward, finding that peace deep within. Fill your awareness with peace, your body with peace, your mind with peace. And just take a few moments to be peace. As always, if you have time to keep relaxing longer today, take as much time as you can. 
It's time to get ready for the rest of your day. Just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however it's feeling right for you today. Breathing more fully, stretching more completely. And when you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, draw your heels toward your hips, and your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around in whatever way that appreciative yoga hug feels good for you today. Letting your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, bring your head and feet to the floor, rolling over to the side and sitting back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.